Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to talk to you about consciousness. Quite a term that. There's a whole area of research that has sprung up about consciousness called consciousness research. And the reason for this is at its narrowest level, we talk about the brain and the brain and consciousness. This is all it is. You're either fully conscious or you might have some impairment of consciousness. You might go all the way through to coma. You might be stuporous. You might respond in part to certain loud stimuli or maybe a prick when people are in deep coma but they don't respond otherwise or they might mumble a jumble of words but it doesn't make any sense. This is all relating to impairments of consciousness but impairments of neurological consciousness. And this is linked up with the brain. And much of my research has looked at brain functioning and how it works. And the link up of various facets of consciousness with the brain. What happens if people claim to have burning smell? Well, we can find the exact area of firing that can produce burning smells and sometimes this is a symptom of seizures. What happens if a person says, it's as if I've gone out of my body? What does that mean? Can we locate it in the brain? Well, there is some research where stimulating certain parts, for example, of link-ups between the parietal and the temporal lobe, for example, the angular gyrus, might produce a sensation where the person in ways feels they're a little bit outside the body. But it's a rather distant sensation. It's not quite there as opposed to this complete feel where they're floating outside their body and they can see everything happening and their consciousness is outside the body. Now much of my work has been done integrating the brain with these kinds of experiences, with these subjective experiences, some of which are SPEs, subjective paranormal experiences. Doesn't mean to say it's paranormal doesn't mean to say it's inside the brain. There has to be an area where the two interact. Now let's go one step further. Let's imagine there is this area where interactions occur and you get altered states of consciousness. We see it every night. We go to sleep. We dream. A dream is an altered state of consciousness and that act of sleeping is also. You don't need to be in coma to have an altered state of consciousness or you meditate, or you're in a higher mystical state. And for this, I talk about metaconsciousness. And this metaconsciousness might include also certain qualities that come through in terms of information and creativity and knowledge and being able to integrate and understand and wisdom. Are we just using our brain? Is this very limited? Now this whole extension outside the brain, some have called it collective consciousness, or sometimes it's the unconscious, or maybe it's this whole meta-consciousness produces a second component for the brain. Very important to bear in mind that here we have now two aspects of consciousness, meta-consciousness and the neurological consciousness. And as I see it, is a third as well. And this is the most fundamental. It might be that every subatomic particle, every wave, every piece of mass and energy is linked up not only with space and time, but fundamentally tethered with some kind of awareness or responsiveness. The most minimal kind it's reflected in such phenomena as entanglement. It's reflected in bit screen experiments involving shooting of photons. And it's almost like the photons knew what to do. It's like a guided reality. So the three components of consciousness that I like to talk about are this guided reality, which may occur at an animate or an inanimate level, even at a subatomic level, all the way through to the macrophysical and the astrophysical. 
The second is regular neurological brain consciousness. And the third is this extension of it, meta-consciousness. And in order for people to understand that we're talking about three different phenomena here, we talk about this as the C matrix. You can imagine if you have a C matrix and you extend to a meta-consciousness, you're also talking about multiple different dimensions of space, maybe, of time, but certainly of consciousness and expanded consciousness. And so I use the term meta-dimensionality. So we are talking today about consciousness, a very important topic. And you will see that consciousness has three fundamental components. Neurological consciousness, meta-consciousness, and a guided consciousness, even in subatomic particles. And we call this the C matrix. And I'm talking to you about models, for example, of consciousness and of dimensions and of the finite and the infinite. And these are topics that I will talk about more in my lectures and in my book, for example, on our model of TDVP. This book is available for download as an electronic book. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure having this opportunity to discuss this very relevant topic with you. Thank you so much for listening.